Hi everyone and welcome to the fifth devlog video for the Viper Adventure level builder. If you haven't seen the previous videos in the playlist, I'm going to leave a link to it in the description down below, but you can also click the card in the top right to go to the playlist. Now let's have a look at all the new features that I've been adding. In the last episode, I spoke about wanting to add Steam Workshop support, and that has been fully implemented now, so if I go ahead and open up the levels menu here, you'll notice how there's now a workshop tab, and this level, Grass Plains, is already uploaded to the Steam Workshop, and you can see it has one rating and it has a very nice description here, as well as my profile picture from Steam to display the creator. Now these are my own levels, so if I go ahead and click the workshop tab, you'll notice that the first level here is made by a question in the floppy, which is one of the game's testers. And if I go ahead and click the browse button here, I'll be taken to the Steam Workshop and I can go ahead and browse levels. Now since the level builder isn't public yet, there obviously aren't that many levels, so let me go ahead and open up Jules level here, called the Gamer level, and hit the subscribe button, and then go back into the game. Now if I go ahead and click refresh, you'll notice that it starts loading in all the levels that I've subscribed to, and the Gamer level which I just subscribed to by Jules now appears in this list here. And I can click this button here to view it in the Steam Workshop, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play the level. So you'll notice how it shows the creator and the name, just like it would with any normal level. Now if I go ahead and just play the level and make it to the end here. Now I'm at the gold balloon after having played the level, and once I smash the gold balloon and beat the level, you'll see how I get this prompt here to evaluate the level. And if I click the thumbs up button, then I'll give the level a positive review, and I can also click the thumbs down button if I didn't like it. And you can open the level in the Steam Workshop if you want to leave a comment. Now if I go ahead and click this button here, you'll notice how it opens up the level in the Steam Workshop, and my negative rating that I gave it inside of the game in the evaluation menu has also been registered here, as you can see. And I can go ahead and for example give him some constructive criticism so that he can improve the level in the future. Okay, now I've gone ahead and created this level here, which is called My Cave, and you can see how there's a spawn point over here to the left, and a seedle right here by the entrance to the cave, and inside the cave there's a bracken, which is one of the new enemies in this update, and finally there's a gold balloon. So let's say I wanted to upload this level to the Steam Workshop, so what you want to do is, you want to save it of course, and you want to go into the levels menu, find the level inside of the menu right here, and then go ahead and click the upload button. And you can also see how it says this level has not been uploaded to the Steam Workshop yet, upload it to give it a description. So I'm going to go ahead and do just that. I'm going to click the upload button, and you'll notice how it tells me that I need to complete the level in order to upload it to the Steam Workshop. Now this is something that I know a lot of you guys have already requested and something a lot of people have been telling me to add and I know Mario Maker does this as well, basically to ensure that the level is actually beatable before it gets uploaded to the public. So I'm going to go ahead and click the play now button here and go and play the level. And you can see how I simply just need to beat the level as if it were a completely normal one, and once I get to the gold balloon here and beat the level, you'll see how this menu here shows up, which prompts me to upload it, and I can give it some kind of description here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and click the submit button. Now before I do that I just want to show you that if you do want to hide the level and make it so that only you or your friends can see it, you can do it from this drop down here. But I'm going to go ahead and click submit, and I'll get a prompt that tells me that it's being uploaded. And it finished, so I can go ahead and click the yes button here to view it inside of the Steam Workshop. And you can see how it's now available on the workshop, 
and people can subscribe to it and give it a like or a dislike and also play it inside of their game just like I did with Jules level. So that's how Steam Workshop uploading works and I think I've covered pretty much everything in terms of uploading and subscribing but please let me know in the comments down below if you notice something that I've missed and I'll happily uh, add that in a future update. Now before we move on to the next major feature, I've made a quick change to this level that I just uploaded. I've added a, another bracken right here and let's say you wanted to upload this to the Steam Workshop as an update to the level that you've already uploaded. So what you want to do is you just want to save the level and head back into the menu right here and then inside of the My Cave here once you click it you'll see that this button has now changed to say update instead of upload. And once again you must complete the level in order to update it on the workshop but essentially it goes through the exact same procedure as last time except instead of uploading a brand new level it updates the existing level so that people can get your updates and that's how that works. Now the next major feature I want to show you guys is the advanced object editor which essentially gives you a lot more control over the individual objects in your level. So if I go ahead and mouse over this leafly here you'll see how he turns blue and if I right click it brings up this menu here where I can edit the properties. So I'm going to go ahead and set the face direction to right and I'm also going to turn off spawn with leaf and then for this guy down here I'm going to set the face direction to right and I'm going to set the move speed to 20. Now you'll notice the sprites change direction inside of the editor to show you your changes and before I show them in action I just quickly want to point out that not all objects can be edited so for example the gems here can't be edited because they don't have any unique editable properties like the leaflets do. Now if I go ahead and click play you'll see that the changes I made actually got applied and we have one very very fast leafly and an airborne leafly which just dropped to the ground. So that's the basics of the object editor however it will get a lot more interesting once we look at some of the other enemies and objects. Now I've gone ahead and loaded in a completely different level here and I'm just going to go ahead and place down a spring and if I right click it you'll see that this has a completely different property here with an edit button that I can click and basically if I click it it opens up this angle editor here where I can change how angled the spring is. So if I go ahead and set the angle to something like this and then exit it again and set the spring force to something like 60 you'll see how once I play the level the spring will be slightly angled and it will shoot me to the right instead of just directly up. The angle editor for the spring is far from the only editor though so if I go ahead and place down a bracken here and open up the property editor window you'll see how there's a waypoint editor button right here and if I go ahead and click edit I'm now inside of the waypoint editor and I can place down these waypoints here or just move around existing waypoints like so and I can also right click waypoints to delete them again and this just allows you to set up the path for the bracken to follow and if I go back into the property editor here and enable cyclic and go back into the waypoint editor you'll see how the last point in the path is now connected to the first path and so if I go ahead and close the menu here and hit play you'll see that the bracken now actually follows the path that I just drew for it and it's also cyclic so it goes back to the first point instead of just traversing all the way back to the start which is what would happen if I had cyclic turned off. So that's the waypoint editor but the waypoint editor works slightly differently for one of the other world one enemies which I'm going to go ahead and show you now. This is the Bramble Bubba and you might recognize him from some of the first levels in the game. If I go ahead and edit this guy's attributes you can see how he has an editor for the trigger but there's also a waypoint editor which I'm going to show you first. So if I go ahead and click edit here you'll see how I can no longer place the waypoint wherever I want. I'm constrained to placing it directly above the Bramble Bopper. So if I go ahead and do that I'm now constrained to a 90 degree angle of sorts here so I can only place it directly to the left right or directly above 
the point that I just placed. And if I go ahead and for example, place down a point here and move, you can see how once again, I'm constrained to only moving it uh, in a specific direction. And that's because the Brample Bopper makes 90 degree turns. So if we just go ahead and place down a few more points, let's move this over here and let's place a point right there and then go back into the property editor. I'm going to show you the trigger editor. So you can see how there's this box here. The trigger is essentially what you need to touch in order to activate the Bramble Bumper. So I'm going to move it somewhere like here and I'm going to set the size to something like this. And then once I hit escape and close and go ahead and play test the level, you can see once I step in this area where I set up the trigger, the Bramble Bumper is going to activate and it's going to follow the path that I just showed you guys. So there you go. That's how you set up Bramble Poppers with the trigger editor and the waypoint editor. One thing to keep in mind with the Bramble Poppers is that you can't delete waypoints in the middle of the path like these two, which you were able to do with the brackens. And that's because if I were to, for example, delete three here, it would form a connection between two and four, which would not have a 90 degree angle. And that would violate the constraint and lead to some extremely strange behavior for the Bramble Popper. So what you can do instead is you can drag waypoints around like so, or you can just delete the final waypoint and then make your change to whichever waypoint it is and then place down the final one once again. So that's just one thing to keep in mind, which is slightly different from how you would edit the waypoints for the brackens. All right, I think that about does it for me for this time. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, I would really appreciate it if you'd give it a like. I'm going to be continuing to work on the level builder. Um, there's still some bugs to fix and some missing features and general quality of life things that I've got to add. But we are getting closer to the public testing phase. And once those things have been addressed, then I will host that testing phase for you guys to try out the level builder. I do want to mention the fact that my exams are quite soon. So there will be a period of about a month where I won't be working much on the game while I study for those exams. So please bear with me and hopefully it won't be too long now before the public testing phase is ready. I really can't wait to share this with you guys. It's something I've been working on for a really long time. So I'm looking forward to getting it out there and getting some feedback from you guys. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, take care. Mm -hmm.